local homeowners. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I didn't hear the governor talk about it at all, so I'm not sure what that, you know, how that would play out. But we had a ledge council study, and we look forward to come up with solutions on it. Support closing sure. that loophole so, maybe in this session, or well, it's not necessarily what the recommendation was, but we'll take a look at it. Yeah. So, so, so uh, on the. Um, Obamacare lawsuit. Eber says he's getting the state out of that. He says he's directing him. We get out a letter from him directing Paul to do that. It would seem, seem to go against what we thought was an extraordinary session uh, legislation. Do you believe he has the authority to do this? Uh, probably a better question for the Attorney General. I'm not sure what what Josh Kyle's going to do now because it's kind of been put him put him in a in a strange place. We'll see if they. Re I don't know what impact it'll have ultimately on the public policy decision that we make related to either Medicaid or ACHA. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, what we saw, we weren't necessarily consulted when the uh, previous attorney general entered into that. Um, obviously, that was something directed by Governor Walker, but, you know, I think it's, once again, it's become a national debate, and we'll see where it goes. Do so. you want to keep the state in the lawsuit? Do you think it's a good idea for Wisconsin to be part of it? No, it probably doesn't make any sense as long as this continues to move through the federal court system. I think we're all waiting for the next shoe to drop, and we haven't seen that yet. So, so well, no, I, I'm sure uh, there's many people that would feel that as long as it's part of that process, as long as it's moving through the courts, that certainly any state should be watching exactly where it's at. So. I don't, I, I don't, I don't have a good answer for you right now because I think we're trying to predict what's gonna, what the next step is gonna be, and we don't know where that lawsuit is gonna go. So. Um, I, I, I was a little disappointed, I think, in that. You know, first of all, he spent a lot of money, and money, and I don't even know where the revenue is coming from for some of these proposals. Just the $600 million for special ed, kind of, I, I took a step back, like, is that the right figure? Is he using the right figure? And it's something that, you know, Democrats have kind of dragged their feet, set, feet on in the past. So, I mean, there was a lot of numbers that were thrown around that I'm not sure if it really adds up at this point. So, so. Like Evers is not going to give up on the Medicaid expansion, including in his own budget. And same with his own proposal when it comes to tax cuts for the middle class. He should, yeah. though. He should give up on it because... Right now, we are going to do just as we've done with Governor Walker, which is work off of a base budget. I mean, that's what the legislature and the finance committee is going to do. And if he throws out figures like that in his budget address, all we're going to do is end up in a situation where it's going to be uh, kind of waterheads and we're going to have to continue to negotiate. But I, it, he can't balance his budget on the Medicaid number. It's not going to work when it comes to the full legislature voting for a budget that ultimately is going to pass probably, hopefully, sometime in June. I believe it was Speaker Ross. Two more? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, because, it, what I mean, what he's building right now is a top-down budget. What he just announced this evening is these are my premier kind of items that I'm going to talk about in the fund. No, I think what we're going to end up doing in the Finance Committee is starting from base, and if you add money to K-12, you're going to do that. If you want to add money to the segregated fund with transportation, you're going to do that. And hopefully that will be able to be negotiated along the way, and that's the process. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what he expects um, the way he announced it this evening, but, yes, the Finance Committee will work off a of base and build from there. So, so. Speaker Boss had previously said that he was open to working off of uh, the governor's budget. How are you going to reconcile those two differences? I don't think the Speaker said that. As a matter of fact, I think the Speaker and I have kind of communicated over the last couple of months that that's exactly where we're going to be. We're going to be working off the base budget. I mean, I understand you can kind of spin it both ways, but when it comes to the areas of the state budget that are going to be critical, it's going to be the Republicans crafting that, and hopefully that the governor will be part of that uh, that discussion. So. Does Governor Evers ha have the legal authority, do you think, to order the, the uh, AG to withdraw from that ACA lawsuit? Uh, uh, um, better question for the Attorney General. But What's I your view, though? What do you think? Yeah, yeah he probably can. Right? Yeah, I think... I think Even under the lame duck Well, yeah, because it's it's part of the executive uh, branch, and I'm sure that that discussion will continue. Uh, but I saw the Attorney General, uh, you know, applauding tonight uh, in response to that. I, I did a 180 and looked exactly where he was at on, and he was applauding that decision. So, so you it don't appears think the lame, that he's in concert. You don't so. think the lame duck law, you know, prevents the governor from... Whether or not we intervene is a different question. That's a completely different legal question. So, And I don't know that I have the answer for that tonight. So... Thanks, guys. Thank you.
one more quick question. I'm just curious. Um, so Governor Evers obviously made a reference to Senator Fitzgerald saying maybe Republicans will go alone, go it alone in, in terms of the budget. Um, do you have confidence that you know they'll there'll be some sort of bipartisan consensus to use Evers' budget first and, and work from there? Or what do you think about that that side of things? Which is really I think Governor there. Evers was encouraging them to, as a goodwill gesture, to say, look. I'll introduce my budget, you should work off of that budget, maintain what you support, modify. It's obviously going to be a compromise and it's not going to, but I think it'd be a kind of a cynical proposal to not even start with the governor's budget and to say we're going to do our own budget and completely you know, undermine the priorities that have been introduced. The reality is state agencies make the budget requests and you know, a good chunk of the budget is going to be similar. There are plenty of non-controversial items that should be funded. Um, let the governor start and, and then the legislature and the Joint Finance Committee can modify and reprioritize as they see fit. But I think what he was saying is, you know, part of bipartisanship and working together is that starting point. not going to raise taxes. That's definite. We're not going to backpedal on the reforms that we did that's growing the economy and jobs. We are definitely there. He didn't give the past administration a lot of credit for the growth that we've had, but if you look at our results, people are saying we had the most uh, manufacturing jobs in the nation in the last several months, and he hasn't talked about that. So why would we want to cut the manufacturing and ag tax credit, which is not for wealthy people, it's for farmers who are going to be hard pressed in the next budget and for small business people who really are the heart of our economy. So we're not going to take away that tax credit. So how is going to pay for this, the middle class tax credit cut is an issue. We support it and we're paying for it. We're paying for it with the surplus we have, the, the 300 million. Looking at the education budget he's proposing, Senator Fitzgerald was pretty skeptical about some of the figures that he was talking about today, particularly the $600 million. What right. do you think about um, yeah, what all, we Yeah, last budget was the biggest investment in education. People have to remember that, and I don't think we get enough credit for that. And I think that we have to remember that, because that was huge. I would be very happy increasing that allocation, but to $1.3 billion, which he's put on the table, the special ed money is really important. I agree with that but where are we going to get the money? But one thing we're not doing is raising the taxes on our hardworking taxpayers, our middle class hardworking taxpayers. But these ideas are good. I think we agree with the two-thirds. I mean, we are at 65 percent of the two-thirds. That's only like one and a half percent off. That's like 140 million. I think that's an achievable goal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. was that for the initial words about bipartisanship, it sure seemed to be an awful lot of partisan rhetoric as he went through the address. You'll see there were an awful lot of applause lines. They actually put in the address when to applaud uh, so that they would make sure everybody was on cue. Uh, I certainly think that there are areas that we can work together on, which is the letter that we put in there. Um, rather than talking about the issues that we know we have the ability to work together on, which is our focus, he has chosen to pick items that, of course, pre-existing conditions. We had a bipartisan vote today with almost everyone in the assembly voting in favor of it, and it seemed to imply that he was going to veto the bill. Well, that certainly doesn't make any sense if we had enough to override his veto in the bill that we passed today. He talked about the income tax cut that we know we certainly can pass. Uh, and there's no reason for us to raise taxes on farmers, manufacturers, anybody in Wisconsin with a massive surplus that we have right now. And most importantly, we are not going to raise taxes, uh, income or sales taxes, on the people of Wisconsin under any circumstances. And we are not going to expand government-run and government-controlled health care. We cannot have been any more direct from the very beginning. That those are issues that are going to divide the legislature, divide our state, and certainly not the tone that we want to set. So what we're going to continue to do is to look for areas that we know we can find bipartisan agreement on. His tax cut with our surplus. The pre-existing condition bills taking up at least one of the things he asked for in the bill. That's called compromise. 
So I certainly think that we have a good first start. I was disappointed in the rhetoric, but I guess I'm coming to realize that what they say at campaign time doesn't always match up with the rhetoric and what they hope to do inside the Capitol. Do you believe the governor is directing the attorney general to take illegal action by directing affordable care? Well, I have not seen the language. Of course, we know it would be illegal for the attorney general to withdraw from the lawsuit without the authority also of the legislature. So we have to have both branches agree to withdraw from the lawsuit. That request has not been made to us. So if he chose to do it unilaterally, I think that would be illegal. Senator Fitzgerald was very strong in saying that he's working off the base budget. Now, you have previously indicated you might be open to using the governor's budget. Where do you stand on that now? Well, I have always said that if he chooses to make political fights by expanding government-run health care and having a big tax increase, it's going to mean the entire budget is unsustainable. So I guess I've tried to be optimistic to say, well, we certainly can work off his budget if he doesn't build it on a house of sand, knowing that all this money is never going to be there that he wants to spend. So. He still has the opportunity to change his mind, but if he decides it's going to be massive tax increase, big spending we can't afford, and certainly um, expanding government-run health care in a way that we cannot afford it, we're, we're, that's, not, that's a non-starter for us. So that would unfortunately mean we have to go the route that Senator Fitzgerald is talking about. But once again, Tony Evers has the chance to actually work together and not just say it. We sat down with him last week, talked about the ideas on pre-existing conditions. We took one of his ideas and actually adopted the amendment today, and now putting down a whole new set of markers. That's not, not how you negotiate. That's not good faith. So I certainly hope he will take a look at the bill that we passed on pre-existing conditions and that that's the way that we move forward, not kind of my way or the highway. So how much harder will it be to find common ground? You've said you're disappointed. You still wouldn't start there after hearing the speech tonight. Change. Well, my job is to constantly be an optimist. Um, that is one of the things that you learn when you go to speaker school, um, that every <laughs> single day is a new day. Uh, so I am disappointed by today, but hopefully tomorrow he begins the process of actually looking at the areas we could work together on. I'm happy to sit down with him and talk about it. But if in a month or six weeks he delivers the budget address and it is chock full of Democrat talking points, tax and spend priorities, making people who are at the Democratic Party convention happy at the expense of the rest of the state, well, it's going to be awfully hard to start that way. So I certainly hope it doesn't happen, but uh, tonight wasn't a good indicator of that. What did you like in the speech? Um, I love the fact that he introduced the band director. Uh, everybody loves the managers. That was kind of Tommy Thompson-esque. Um, I think the idea of saying we have to work together is something that people do want. I think if you clearly look at the record of what's happened over the course of the past two weeks since the inauguration, one side has sent a letter saying here's we can work together, offer to meet, invite him to our caucus. And now, basically, they're telling us if you don't do it our way, we're going to veto your bills. I, I think that's very disappointing. You and Evers agree on a tax cut for the middle class, but disagree on how to pay for it. Is this to suggest that this tax cut might not end up happening? Well, we're going to pass one. It's my intention. We have a way to pay for it. His plan entirely relies on increasing other people's taxes. And, you know, we have a huge surplus. It's been developed by good budgeting priorities. We met all the criteria that he set down to say it should not be across the board. I would prefer to cut taxes for everybody, but we chose to do it his way which is cutting taxes just for the middle class. So he will have to make choices. When bills get to his desk, it's easy to pump your chest up and say you're going to veto it, but he's actually got to make that decision when it gets to his desk. So I can't control that. I think the fact that we got a good bipartisan vote today is a good sign when he says he doesn't want something and many Democrats voted with us anyways. So I have the feeling that when we have the same thing for a tax cut, most Democrats are not going to want to vote against a middle income tax cut. So he might be able to pump up his chest, but I have a feeling that once it gets to his desk, he might change his mind. Do you think there's any compromise on Medicaid expansion, something that he stressed highly in his speech? No. All right, thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That'll be a simple one to cut.